Hey guys, Spitz here with Nelson Treehouse and Supply. Today I'm going to show you how to build a ship's ladder, just like this one. And remember, the plans are available online. Uh, the ship's ladder is just a great thing to have in a treehouse. We use them all across the country, uh, super efficient. So yeah, let's do it. Today's project is an intermediate level project. You're going to have to have some basic carpentry knowledge. And as far as materials go, we're using Doug fir for our wood. It's a great wood. It's solid, uh, stains real nicely. Uh, for our stair stringers, we're going to need uh, 2 by 12 by 16. Uh, for our stair treads, we'll need 2 by 6 by 12. Um, hardware is very simple. We're just using screw products um, and quarter by four inch wag screws just to hold our stair treads in along with some tight bond two glue. And as far as tools for building the ship's ladder, we're going to need a jigsaw, palm sander, worm drive, uh, Japanese pull saw. It's also very helpful to have a selection of chisels around. Um, we use a drill with two different bits. We use an eighth inch it bit for our pilot holes, a one and a half inch Forstner bit as well. Um, I used a plunge router with a three-quarter straight bit um, with a bearing on the top, uh, which is important, and a palm router with a three-eighths inch roundover with a bearing on the bottom, um, and then just a driver with a T25 bit um, to drive our screws. And that's it. So I drew these plans uh, specific uh, to this treehouse that we're working on coming up. Um, the plans online are a little bit different, but it's the very much the same general concept. Stair tread height is good to keep around a foot from the top of stair tread to the top of the next stair tread. Another thing to keep in mind with the ship's ladder is uh, the degree. We found that 18 to 20 degrees is the best way to go. So I mocked a stair tread up here. Uh, so we can just visually see what's going on. Um, there's a couple choices that you have when choosing how you want to do your stair treads. Um, you can have your stair tread buried inside the wood, or you can have your stair tread out and either sticking out or flush with the back. In this case, um, we're going to go with flush from the back, and this is totally just an aesthetic decision. Um, so our stair treads are going to kind of go like this. Um, flush with the back of the staircase, coming in and buried in the wood here. So in order to do this, I'm going to have to rip down these 2x12s here real quick so that we can have like this ni very nice uh, clean edge. Uh, I'm just cutting the base at the angle that we want, which is 18 degrees on this one. And then I'm going to be able to pull all my measurements right off that. So as I'm working, I like to lay these out um, mirror image as they're going to be because you are building two separate pieces that are opposite, so it's not the same cut on each piece. Uh, so what I just did was uh, quickly lay out where our stair treads are going to be. You can see these guys going there, bam, bam. Mark all eight stair treads just so I know where they go, and I mocked out this up top too so I know um, just exactly what my board's going to cut like. All right, so now I know where all my stair treads are going to go. I need to cut my pockets uh, so we have a place to put those stair treads. Uh, in order to do that, I have built this beautiful jig here, and I'm going to use a router uh, to go in and take out that material. This router bit has a ball bearing on top, and so that is actually going to follow this plywood all the way around. And now it's set to a depth, so it will cut into this material, or it'll cut a pocket about 5 eighths. And so this is super handy because that, with that ball bearing right here, I know it's going to cut out the exact same pocket for each stair tread, so I don't have to worry about it being different. So we have uh, one of our 2x12 all routed out now uh, for eight stair treads. Um, but you'll notice if I try to take this jig, use it on the other side, it might look like it's going to work just like it did over here, but it's actually going in the wrong direction. Because again, these are mirror images of each other. 
And so we actually want the stair tread to be coming down this way. Um, yeah, so I'm going to have to flip the jig. I can't use the same jig on each side. So now that we got our uh, pockets cut out for our steps, um, ready to start working on railing so we can actually get up in there. All right, so this is the top part of our railing coming up into the loft here. So I'm working on cutting this out right now. I'm going to be cutting a couple holes here and cutting out the material in between. So I'm going to cut out an inch and a half hole here. It's an inch and a half Forstner bit. Um, yeah, and that's actually just going to be the end of a long run that's going to create our railing. I'm going to leave two inches of material here. This is all kind of arbitrary choices. We normally leave about inch and a half, uh, but because I'm looking at having a couple knots in there, I want to leave enough material where I really have enough strength. Um, so I decided that I'm leaving two inches in the front. I'm going to have an inch and a half gap here, um, and it's going to be in three inches from the top. Um, and those are just aesthetic choices that I made. I got my two holes cut, beep, and uh, I'm just scribing a line in between, and then I'm going to cut this whole piece out, and it's going to be a railing. And I'll be finishing this off with my Japanese pole saw here. There we go. Uh, I just got to do this another one, two, three, four, five, five times and I'll be done. Yeah, five more times. Now that I got our uh, handles cut out, um, I'm going to go ahead and actually cut out this top shape here. So I'm just, you know, I'm going to round everything over, give this guy a little bit of character here. Um, and I think this coffee lid might just be the perfect template here. All right, so now that I got uh, this rounded over, I'm going to go ahead, um, just kind of clean up the inside of these holes that I cut and everything, uh, and then repeat that process on the next one. If you made it this far, you should have something that looks like this. Two beautiful stair stringers here, uh, mirror images of each other. Um, yeah, ready for the finishing touches here. So I'm going to be using this uh, 3 8 round over router bit with a ball bearing on the bottom here uh, just to follow around and help uh, take away that sharp edge and make it nice and round, easy to grab onto. So we've uh, rounded over most of our edges. We left this back edge just because when we put our stair tread in, we'll want that to be a sharp corner. We won't that, want that rounding into each other. Because if you take like a normal two by six like I got here, stick that in, you can see that we have a gap there. You know, and that has been determined by the size of our router bit that cut that hole. And our router bit was 3 fourths. So if we split that in half, take our 3 eighths, round this over three eighths and that should be able to fit fine. And there we go. Now we've got a tight fit. So this stair tread material, I ripped to an 18 degree bevel on the back, which is the same as our incline for uh, the ship's ladder. Um, and that's pretty much what this piece was. And it, like I just demonstrated over here, that needs to be a 3 eighths round over instead of a quarter inch in which it comes in. So it's a pretty quick little thing. I'm going to use my palm router again and crank this out. 
now that I've got all my stair tread material prepped, I've got it rounded over, I've got the bevel on the back, I just gotta figure out what length I wanna cut them all down to, which really just comes to how wide do I want my shift slatter. I'm just gonna set a block here um, to the width that I want my stair treads and start chopping them up. Now that all of our pieces have been cut out, we've got our rounded over edges and everything, um, it is very beneficial to sand before you put something together. Um, because otherwise, you know, you're kind of like reaching around things. This way, I just get to blast off and uh, sand this whole thing. And that's what I'm gonna do. screws on the market. That's what we're using right now. Quarter by fours, uh, screw products, a um, couple of these per stair, stair tread, and uh, this whole thing's gonna come together. These are four inches, pretty big. We definitely wanna pre-drill for these. Um, and one way, without having to scribe everything out on the other side, is just to screw from the inside, get exactly where I want it, and then um, when we put it all together, I'll screw again. Finally, the moment we've all been waiting for, assembly of this beautiful ship slider. Um, I've got all my stair treads, I've got my two pieces cut out and ready to go, and now it's just basically stacking them together, um, screwing and gluing. I'm gonna start by putting my top tread and my bottom tread in, um, and then I'm just gonna slide all the other treads right into place. Get a nice amount of glue in there. I'm not driving them in. I'm keeping them flush on the surface. You actually keep, you retain a lot of strength by doing that. And while you're gluing up, you always want to keep a rag, a wet rag on you. Because just like this, if you let that dry, it's impossible to get off later. This here is a beautiful finished ship's ladder. Freshly screwed and glued. This is one of the wider ship's ladders I've ever made. I mean, you could get two people going up this at one time, I think. You're not going straight up a ladder. You're not going up a staircase, so it's not using as much space. Well, we did it. We built a ship's ladder ready to be installed in any treehouse, anywhere. Plans available online, nelsontreehouseandsupply.com. Well, that's our ship's ladder. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, um, and hope some of you actually get around to building one yourself. Uh, we have plans online available at nelsontreehouseandsupply.com. We also have tons of other great videos over there, and right above, you can subscribe to make sure you uh, stay in contact with us.